Good evening everybody and a very warm welcome to Barrington Districts and today is something slightly different and this is going to be part two of the AWS Ramps video response and it's a driver's eye view but before we get on to that I wanted to quickly add on a few bits and pieces um, just as a footnote to yesterday's video um, firstly um, if R156 or any loco go over this AWS ramp but it goes over the non-sloped bit the train won't react to it it will only react if it goes over the sloped bit facing forward so when when the train goes over the AWS ramp and it's flat the flat end the train won't react it won't give an audio buzzer or anything like that the other thing is um, which was also pointed out to me, which I already knew, but I'd just forgotten to pass on to you, was that basically, um, when the buzzer goes off, if it's a warning buzzer, the driver has five seconds to react to it before the train brakes are automatically applied. I mean, however, for modeling purposes, it doesn't actually apply to us. But what I thought I'd do is give you a little driver's eye view through my train simulator. So if you sort of stick by me, we will get on to that. Here we are at my computer, and I thought I'd sort of demonstrate it in this kind of train sim video, and um, just to see how it comes out and give you a bit of an understanding on what the AWS does and all the rest of it and show you how it's implemented on the train sim. So before we have a look at the loco, um, this is just the interior of it and the AWS button is this big yellow one here on this particular loco and if you press it, it will basically cancel the um, buzzer and that is basically telling the um, basically telling the, the train that you've acknowledged and that you understand that there's a warning coming up. You don't have to acknowledge it if it's a green. If it goes ding and it's just a green, you don't have to acknowledge it, but you have to acknowledge it within five seconds um, if it's anything other than a green, whether it's a speed restriction or an amber or double amber or a red. Otherwise, the train brakes will just automatically cut in because it will assume that the, that the driver is incapacitated or something along those lines and therefore it will automatically um, pull the brakes on and stop the train automatically. So we're just going to take a little short um, hop just to um, the next station along. We are on the west coast main line north at Trent Valley route and we're just going to be pulling into Stafford only just a little short hop just to demonstrate the um, just to demonstrate the loco and um, demonstrate the AWS basically. Right, so I'm just going to set up the train before we go anywhere. Um, the DRA light is on and that means that you get to the driver's reminder appliance to let us know that there's a red signal ahead and that cuts off the power to the train so it won't allow us to move the train. I'm just going to stick it to forward. That's the AWS warning bell. So we press the yellow button here. It's now just gone to amber so we're clear to proceed. So we can switch that off. If we take a look outside, the train that's currently in vogue at the moment is this Midland, London Midland Class 350. I'm just going to switch some lights on it first of all. And that's on the daytime settings. And we're just going to take a short hop to Stafford Station just to demonstrate the AWS in operation. So we've got a single single amber here. I'm just going to turn the game noise down a bit. And basically it can go one of two ways after that. It can either go to a green or it can go to a red signal. But we have to assume it's going to be a red signal. So 
So because we're assuming it's a red signal, I'll only take it up to about 30 miles an hour, which is here, the speed, just in case that says it's going to be a red signal. Now we've got a flashing amber and that basically indicates that we're going to be controlled and routed into the platform at Stafford. So we should get a warning shortly from the AWS ramp, which you can see coming up now. And as the train passes over it, it should sound a buzzer. And as you see, the AWS ramp is here. As the train passes over it, the buzzer's gone off. We've cancelled it using the AWS button which is this button here and if we don't do that within five seconds the train's brakes will automatically come on so I'm just trundling along And that is also displaying an amber. And we're now approaching a neutral section, which is what that sign is. So whenever we whenever we see that, it means we have to cut the power to the train and coast over it because the power is transfer being transferred from one district to another. So we have to cut the power, and once we've gone over that short neutral section, we can reapply the power. But as we're approaching Stafford this Station... This is stop service for London Euston, calling us Stafford, Longington, Rugby, and London Euston only. The next stop is Stafford. Please remember to take all of your luggage and personal belongings with you when leaving the train. So that AWS buzzer was for the um, route indicator and for the um, amber signal that we've just passed. And here you can see we're approaching Stafford Station in 0.25 miles. And we've got an upcoming 40 speed restriction followed by an upcoming 25 speed restriction. train in the green. That little ding there is, to, is for the upcoming signal that we have up here that's telling us that it's green. But we don't need to acknowledge that. And here we are at Stafford. And I hope that explains, from a driver's eye point of view, a little bit better and clears it up a little bit better um, what the driver has to do and how it's applied on the railway, the AWS ramps. Obviously, for modelling purposes, it's literally... Um, you don't need to understand in terms of what the driver has to do, but it's good just to understand where to place them. So thanks for watching. Please feel free to comment and subscribe, and I will speak to you very, very soon. Bye for now.